Welcome back to Force Education. This is Zed. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about Camber Energy as an update, as we've seen a surge in volume and in price today. Now, I did talk about this one before. You'll find my previous video in the description below. Now, in terms of the latest news, we don't have anything that have hit November so far. So we're able to see that this company here hasn't responded since the short report, and before that it was August. So it's been a while for this company. Now, in terms of the SEC filings, we did receive some really interesting SEC filing reports. So, first off, the recent ones were mainly towards 10Q, which related towards uh, predecessor towards the earnings in general. So there wasn't something that was significant on there, but it was quite interesting to see that they are still keeping things up to date from an SEC standpoint of view. Now, in terms of Twitter interest, we're able to see that retail in general appears to be liking CEI and it's almost going back into the trend of a pump and dump. So you got to be very careful when playing with this one because it's all about momentum. And on another thing here, uh, taking a quick look into what quote unquote like short interest squeezes and stuff. So Taking a look into that, short interest has been quite low, around 25.68. That's one-fourth of the entire volume going towards the short volume. And the short interest is only sitting at 13.18%, so it wasn't as significant as some people uh, show it to be. The short ratio is only around 0.16. So it's definitely not a short squeeze in the making when a lot of people are talking about that. You got to be very careful. Again, people watching this channel, uh, I'm not into pump and dumps, and I'll call it as it is. Now, on the other parts that we're taking a look at, for instance, institutional buyers, yes, a lot of people highlighted that there is some significant institutional buyer activity, mainly green, which is good. So, for instance, on the 15th, he got uh, subset systematic strategy or cupset, my bad, systematic strategies, adding around 173,000 shares, creative planning, 33,000, uh, Commonwealth Equity Services, 110, and uh, Sequina International Group, 154. HRC Financials, 140,000. Some names as well, like Morgan Stanley, adding around 52,000. Royal Bank of Canada. Now, smaller positions than some, but there is some institutional activities. Insiders, it's been quiet and not much going on there. Now, in terms of latest news, as we said, it's a bit, a bit of a dry season and I can't see any relevant news for this push other than people just pushing it cumulatively uh, and together as retail. So you gotta be very careful when you're playing onto this. Usually when you're trying to jump on it, it's a little bit too late. But what we're gonna do is highlight significant resistances and supports to see exactly at what point you should be worrying about a reversal. These are points that are historical resistances and supports that you gotta keep in mind. Before moving on forward, if you'd like to see more contents like this, make sure to click the subscribe button and leave vacations on for this channel. Also, drop a like to this video if you've enjoyed this video so far and enjoy my series. And you can join our Discord in the description below. And let's jump right on to technical analysis. Now, from a technical analysis perspective, here comes some of the things that are more interesting about this one than just news and SEC filings. So, on the moving averages, this one is starting to climb up back. Now, it's above the 200 SMA, and that's a bullish thing, above the 104. Above the 165, it's officially bullish on the 50 SMA as well. So it's starting to look like it's a reversal point, especially with that massive 30% jump. Now, average directional index is starting to bounce back after it hit on the 1374, but it's still got room to go. You need it to be above 20 for this to be a trend. Now, currently, this is more of a sideways trading, generally speaking. Willing percent R, which is very similar to the relative strength index, showcases that this one is overbought, suggesting a lot more buys than selling transactions going on. Now, for each transaction, there's buy and sell, but it's supply and demand, and there's more demand than there is supply. Now, MACD here officially gone towards the positive, marking in a bullish reversal on the technical indicators, and that's always a good sign. Momentum is also positive for... It's been negative for a while or very close to zero, so this is the positive value uh, first time in a while. And it's currently at 0.23, not that significant, but still significant enough to be considered as a reversal. Now, in terms of stochastic fast and stochastic slow, the fast one suggests a couple more days at least of such action. The slow suggests at least a few more days as well, three or four days or so. In terms of the moving average bands, 
we're seeing currently there is on the Bollinger Bands an expectation that this one trades between 155 and 99 cents. Meanwhile, the moving average bands are between 140 and 114, but it's attempting to break the Bollinger Bands from the top, and that's always a good sign. Volumes have actually multiplied over around four times more than usual, or at least the days before. In terms of Fibonacci tracements, there are some key supports and resistances we need to understand. There's 140 as a key support, it needs to stay above it to contain this bullish movement. The one after it is 33 cents, resistances are 206, 259, 312, 388, and 485. Now we do have some price line action supports and resistances that are critical to this movement. So first off, there is a key resistance sitting at the 155. If it breaks it, it will attempt to break another one at 170, and then after that, 191, and then it jumps quite a bit to around 228, and then upwards to around 285, going higher to 307, and then 342, and then it starts jumping all the way closer to 450s to 485. Now, the critical support that it needs to stay above it, no matter what, is at the 133. If it breaks 133, you're much in trouble because it's very likely it will hit the 120. If it hits the 120 and it breaks that as a knife, it would be 109 and then a sharp decline to 1. And if it does break to 1, the next stop is at 84, followed by 67, followed by 48 and 33 cents. So it's quite of a slippery slope from there. Now it comes to the question, Ed, what do you think is happening here? Now, fundamentally speaking, this company is in fact overvalued. Now, I'm not saying that from a basic perspective, but first off, the price over book is multiples times what the SP500 averages, and the price over sales is even higher than the price over book. And that's a critical thing. This stock is not being traded with fundamentals, but rather the momentum. So when someone comes in and buys and they're not as experienced, I'm not sure how your experience you are, but mention down in the comments below what you think. But some people with buying here around, let's say around 79 cents. Now the first pack buy around 79 cents, they would enjoy a nice move to 174. That's amazing. And then there's another bunch here that buys around here and then they start selling at 485. Now they start expecting that this trend will continue with this very bullish action. And whoever buys in around this massive two candles have seen almost within a week, a massive drop all the way back to $1. So it does definitely look like a pump and dump. You gotta be very, very careful when you're trading such, depending on your experience level. And at the same time, it's momentum. Now, how do you play with momentum? There is support, there is uh, stop limits, for instance, and understanding where the support's at, but it doesn't really apply when there's something called halts or if the stock drops significantly overnight. Now you gotta be very careful again. I think the resistance, the next resistances are very important and the support being around that 134, 135 level is key for it to be not broken. And if it does, we're in trouble. Now, what do you think is gonna happen here? Make sure to down in the comments below. Share, subscribe and like and have a wonderful day. Now, if you're still here on this video, make sure to drop down below and join our Discord. We have a lot of different things going on, including, for instance, members that gives picks for free. It's not pump and dumps. We just things we think about, swings, etc. We also have really exciting bots. Uh, you can actually use those ones. For instance, we're just testing out this bot, for instance, that gives you Fibonacci resistance points, activities, etc. And we have a bunch of free things, totally free. We run on tips here, and you can ask me questions, suggest stocks, etc. It's a really nice community that has been growing up uh, very fast at a very good rate and it's totally free if you would like to join that one. Feel free to do so in the description below and have a wonderful day.